Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Varun. I work on Visual Studio Performance. And with me, I have Victor. He is the engineering manager on performance. Uh, so for all your performance stuff, you know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for coming. I understand it's lunchtime. So if any of you are eating your food, we don't mind at all. We had a late brunch, so we are full. But feel free to eat. Um, since it can be a fairly large topic to cover, someone told me they wish they had an entire day to talk about this with me, but we have 20 minutes. So I'm going to set expectations what we'll cover in this session. So we'll talk about a lot of stuff we have done in last year, real quick. Uh, and then we'll actually demo you live. Victor will actually open Visual Studio and demo you live how certain choices can significantly impact performance. After that, we're going to talk about uh, hardware choices Videos and how to report slide. issues to us. Um, so this is my favorite slide, of course. We have worked a lot in last one year. And I'll actually show you a video that you know, I think you probably saw in the keynote as well if you attended that. Uh, but we have made significant improvements in performance uh, in just last one year. This is the video uh, where we are comparing not 2015, but actually just 2017 from last year and 15.7 update that that just got released. And you can see it's a very large solution that we are going to load in both the versions. So significant difference you will see. In addition, we have redesigned the test discovery process as well. Uh, so it does not require a rebuild. Now, you see that solution loads significantly faster. And in the demo that Victor is going to do, he's going to show you how certain choices can actually make your solution load longer. So we'll go over those tips as well. Uh, this is vanilla, both cases being compared. In addition, the test discovery does not require a build. It just starts on its own right away after solution has been loaded. Um, and huge improvement in solution load performance as well. So if you are using 2015 or even 2017 from last year, you can get a lot faster performance just by upgrading to 15.7. So when you go back, Basically, please let your, your colleagues, your team know that upgrading is going to help solve a lot of performance issues for them. This is a question we get a lot from developers uh, and just at this conference as well. So we have a slide up there for this. A developer is upgrading their hardware, and they want to know what makes significant difference. So we looked at our telemetry millions of solution loads we analyze in our lab as well. And we find that while all three play a role, SSDs have the most dramatic effect. SSDs can make your solution load, for example, on an average, we see they're three times faster. In some cases, they're up to six, seven times faster as well. The good thing with SSDs, they can be upgraded without necessarily upgrading the full box. We did it at Microsoft and a lot of teams, and our developers were really happy. For all managers in the house, a nice way to increase your WHI scores for your employees. Uh, now, without further ado, I'll invite Victor. He's actually going to show you live uh, on Visual Studio. He'll open both the cases and, and show you how options that you choose, your environment can make dramatic difference. Victor, please come on. Thank you, Varun. Hi, my name is Victor. I'm an engineering manager in Visual Studio. Today, I will show techniques that will help you to work with your solution faster. We'll start with three simple things that apply to small solutions and large solutions. So this is a small solution. It has one web application and one test project. Many developers have a habit of closing Visual Studio before going home. Let's say we're back next morning, ready to start coding. We'll start the day from opening our solution. 
Visual Studio starts, and then it takes some time to load the solution. It is parsing the solution file. It is parsing and evaluating the project files. It is restoring documents and windows that were opened before we close Visual Studio. Sometimes it will run the design time build to figure out dependencies between projects and calculate IntelliSense. So there are several reasons why this relatively small solution took so long time to load. First, look at all these documents hanging around. They take time to initialize. The only, document, the only window that I personally need right after solution load is the solution explorer. Let's go ahead and auto hide other windows. This will also give us more real estate to work with our documents. You can save your favorite window layouts here and switch between them quickly, like, like that. Next, look at the document that Visual Studio restored for us. This is convenient if you want to work on the same code, but often we don't when we load the solution. In this case, it's a good habit to close all documents when we no longer need them. My third suggestion is to keep Visual Studio running. When Visual Studio opens projects, opens files, it creates structures and memory, so it's ready to open more projects, more files quickly. But when we press this X button, the state is gone, it has to be recreated. So when we are done working with our solution, we're going to close the solution, but keep Visual Studio running. We can now use it for something else. When we're ready to work on this solution again, we'll just select it from here. Did you see how fast it was? I will do this again in case anybody blinked. <laughs> Click. Ready. And we can still access our windows quickly. We can open our documents. Visual Studio remains fast and fluid. To summarize, your solution load experience can be dramatically different based on how we configure our environment. Next, let's talk about large solutions. I will use the Orchard website, which is an open source context management project. It is available on GitHub, so you can try it yourself. Working in Git, we usually start our work by creating a new branch for a bug fix or a feature. Let's do that in Team Explorer. So I'll connect to the Orchard repo that I already run locally. Go to branches, and we can create a new branch from here. People who branch from a local master often end up doing daily merges between two local branches and several branch checkouts a day. This is an expensive workflow for huge code bases. It is better to branch from a, from a remote origin right here. Let's name our branch. It is important to get to the right branch before opening a solution. Otherwise, we'll have to wait for Visual Studio to do this throwaway work, parsing source code files that are about to change. We are on the right branch now, so let's go ahead and open the solution. This is a sizable solution. It has 88 projects, and it will take several seconds to load. Yet, it is much faster than before, thanks to all performance optimizations we recently did in Visual Studio. What is the first thing we like to do in the large and familiar code base? Often, we search. The fastest way to search the entire solution is to press Control T. For example, let's figure out how buttons are implemented on the Orchard website. Visual Studio will use the same fast index that powers up IntelliSense to search file names, types, and members of these types. We can further filter down to classes and quickly find what we were looking for. So fast solution load and search are great, but we want more. How many times a day do we build? A lot. Visual Studio saves us time by not rebuilding projects that didn't change from the previous build. However, this solution has one rebellious project. This project wants to build every time, even if we changed nothing. So we're going to fix that and learn a couple tricks along the way. In addition to opening solutions, Visual Studio 2017 supports opening folders right here. This is convenient if your code doesn't have folders and doesn't have projects and solutions, or if you just want to make a quick edit in a large solution. So go to go ahead and open the Orchard, Orchard code. Time to open folder doesn't depend on the folder size. It is like opening it in a file explorer. 
we'll use the familiar control T gesture to find the rebellious project. Here it is, pretty fast. Next, we're going to check if this project includes files that always must be copied. It does. This line right here, it forces Visual Studio to build this project even if nothing has changed. So if you see this in core reviews, question it. We're going to fix that by replacing always with preserve newest. While we're looking at the project structure, I'm going to show you one more thing. These several lines tell Visual Studio to include web.config files from multiple subfolders of this project. Some developers prefer to express the same thing using so-called globing pattern. Let me show you how that looks like. This is a globing pattern, double asterisk. It tells Visual Studio to include all web.config files from subfolders under this project. This is fine if the number of subfolders is relatively small, but that also forces Visual Studio to scan all these subfolders at solution load. So imagine if we had something like this. This will force Visual Studio to scan the entire disk at solution load. So imagine how fast this is going to be. Well, this is an extreme example. We saw a solution from one of our customers that has something like that. Modulus. So modulus is a large folder with shared components. This line added six minutes to each solution load. Just imagine, like six minutes every day across thousands of developers. Globing is a powerful tool, but use it carefully. Slight changes in the project file can have huge impact on our solution load, build, and other scenarios. You can diagnose and fix some of these issues yourself by searching for always or double, or double asterisk in your project file. For a more complex analysis, we built an extension that we're announcing today. It's called Project System Tools. It is available in Visual Studio Gallery. Again, the extension name is Project System Tools. It can give you much detailed diagnostics. I'm going to go ahead and undo our globing changes. We'll close the folder and get back to the solution to verify our build fix. When we build this solution first time, we expect that the project that we just changed, it will be built. However, when we build this solution again, we expect something different. So let's, let's test it. Pay attention to the output, output pane that will show up in a second and time it takes to build this project and this solution. So we build this project, let's do that again, build. No rebuild, and it is faster now. So yay, we just saved some time for all Orchard developers. If one DLL doesn't sound like a huge deal to you, please keep in mind that these kind of issues tend to accumulate in large code bases. It is worth to spend time and clean them up. What is the next thing we like to do after build? Debugging. Let's start debugging, and you may notice that it actually takes some time to start debugging for this solution. Pay attention to the bottom left corner where Visual Studio will start telling us that it is loading simple files. These are the files that map source code with binaries. Visual Studio needs to load them to bridge these two worlds. One of the ways to speed up startup of debugging is to load less symbols. There are several ways to do that, and we'll look today in the just my code setting. So to get to it, just type just my code. This setting right here in the middle of the screen, it tells Visual Studio, when it is selected, it tells Visual Studio to only load symbols from projects in this solution. It is enabled by default, but sometimes people disable it and forget to re-enable it. So let's check it first. If our solution is huge and we want to further limit the number of symbols, we can specify the exact DLLs and EXEs that we want to debug right here. Orchard project is not that huge, so we'll skip this step. Let's stop debugging and start it again. Visual Studio will load less symbols because we enabled just my code setting. We will not be able to debug 
into the system libraries will not be able to put breakpoints there. But this is OK for most debugging tasks. The good news is that debugging starts faster now. To summarize, we saw how to speed up solution load, branch selection, search, build, and debug. Happy coding. Back to Arun. Thank you so much, Victor. So uh, we saw all these you know, suggestions, and we saw the video. But we understand that you may still see slower performance sometimes on some machines. And you would like us help. So we have a tool in Visual Studio, which is Report a Problem tool. And it has a very neat functionality that we absolutely love, is a record button. It has a record button which you can use to record the exact problem you're seeing. It will record the steps as well as all the diagnostic information that we need in order to simulate and understand what's causing the slowdown. So for example, the six minutes solution load time that Victor described, we saw it at least from a few dozen customers, and we were able to kind of look through what was happening because of this record functionality. So please use this. We, we absolutely, uh, you know, this is super useful for us to investigate. Without it, it just becomes kind of hard to find out what's going on on your solution on your machine. All the content that we are, you know, sharing today and much more content that we are not able to share because of lack of time, it will be all present on this short link, um, aka.ms slash vsperf. Please use this. Um, our email addresses are also here. If you would like to discuss anything further or a specific issue you're seeing, we'll be hanging around here. And also, you can email us. We can arrange a conference call afterwards as well. Well, thank you so much for coming, especially at lunchtime. Happy lunch, happy build, thank happy you. performance.